What does it take to be the bravest sailor in the world? You end up getting like a 30 foot wave as like your standard day at sea. So that's the size of a house. To have the guts and the grit to face the roughest seas. I can't even keep myself warm. I'm shivering constantly. And sail into the most treacherous storms willingly. The mark came down. If you had asked me 10 years ago if I would be setting records sailing around Antarctica, I would laugh in your face. Lisa Blair's latest world record saw her sail around Antarctica over 92 days, covering a distance of 30,000 kilometres. That's more than 18,000 miles. She didn't stop and she hardly slept. I sleep 20 minute micro sleeps. So how did she do it and how did she survive? I'm in Brisbane, Australia. We just docked our boat a few kilometres away from the Guinness World Record holder. We're going to be meeting Lisa Blair. who recently sailed around Antarctica. Here we go, nervous. Solo and unassisted for her second time. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> so to meet someone of this calibre, this level, I'm a little nervous, but keen to find out what she eats and where she sleeps for three whole months. Where do you sleep? Lisa. These bunks. So I sleep the bottom one normally. I'm just rigging them up. <laughs> so when you're healing, you're like nicely just tucked up in there. I guess one of the first things that come to mind about sailing around Antarctica are the icebergs. What happens if Lisa was to hit one with her boat? Is it an icebreaker? No. <laughs> She's fiberglass. She's risking it. If I see ice, I'm in trouble. I've, hit, I've, I've gone wrong. Most icebergs start at like 70 degrees south. My lowest limit is 60 degrees south. Ooh, so okay. there's icebergs potentially in the area. And I did sail within like 140 nautical miles of a known iceberg, but I am in a plastic boat. That's when we find out it's the storms and the swell that are Lisa's main concerns. This is a big wave coming through at about five meters. We've been having knockdowns all morning. The boat's been getting smashed around here. You have these waves that come through, but they're like mountains. They become these rolling hills and you've got these kind of peaks and valleys that you see. There's no land that's to break up the storms anywhere except Cape Horn. So that means these storm cells, they go the whole way around the Southern Ocean. They just get more and more aggressive as they go. They're generating larger and larger swell. So you end up getting like a 30 foot wave as like your standard day at sea. So that's the size of a house that becomes normal. I actually dug out the CCTV footage of the first knockdown. This is that knockdown. You can actually see the whole bow of the boat just getting absolutely shoved sideways by the force of that wave. I've been in storms so strong down there that you have to physically cup your mouth and rotate your head away from the wind to get a breath of air because the wind is ripping so much water off the ocean that it's raining sideways and there's so much density of water in the air that you just can't breathe. Day 59, we just got smashed by a squall on deck. Sort of 45 knots wind, I've had 48 knots of wind. And then the squall passes after dumping hail and rain, sleet, whatever this stuff is. Now let's remember that Lisa is sailing solo, meaning she won't see a soul for 92 days. And the first time she'll see land during the circumnavigation will be at the halfway mark as she sails past Cape Horn. It's day 45 at sea, and guess what? There's Cape Horn! It's so exciting! <laughs> the southern tip of South America where the Pacific and Atlantic oceans meet. I also saw my first ship in 45 days, it's been a huge day of milestones. But with the milestones comes the emotional roller coaster. So utterly exhausted, I can't measure out my emotions at the moment. She won't be able to share the night shifts. She's completely on her own. What is your sleep regime? Well, on a boat, whether you're solo or with crew, you still have to abide by rule five of the collision regulations, which is keeping a good lookout by all available means. My eyeballs are a pair of those means. I sleep 20 minute micro sleeps and I'm checking the horizon every 20 minutes. I never rely solely on my electronic equipment. If you go down the back, you'll see my B&G instruments are on a cant. When I'm in bed, I can cant it to port or to starboard so I can see my instruments, adjust my autopilot. When I 
went to something like Antarctica for example I was so far from anything my shore crew on land would check marine traffic and the closest one ship got to me was like 200 miles so I did increase my sleep um, but it was pretty well up to like 40 minutes I think I got one sleep of like an hour and a half once in the whole circumnavigation so it's yeah sleep deprivation to the extreme and when feelings of loneliness and isolation kick in these notes keep her going. That just connected me with people. Mm. Mum would like notice that I was having a bad day and send me messages with everyone's comments on social media and stuff to cheer me up because you just had some bad days. You stress your body so intensely in these projects that there is a recovery period afterwards and that was pretty intense. And this is her kitchen where she eats. How do you provision for three months? Get freeze dried food, so it's pretty well all freeze dried. So if you're wondering, I was here actually attempting to help Lisa prepare for her world record attempt last year. How long have you guys had your boat for? We got her in April. Let's just say in hindsight, when Lisa asked about John and my sailing adventures, if you're new here, John and I bought a boat called Takana in Melbourne. We had zero sailing experience and we ended up learning how to sail throughout a 3000 nautical mile adventure to the Great Barrier Reef. So when Lisa asked if we had any hairy moments, I told her about an experience we had in the Bass Strait on our first ever sail. Because at that stage I'd had like three weeks sailing experience. John was at the front with a flathead screwdriver in like these heaving three and a half metre seas, which is probably nothing compared to what you're used to. Pretty big seven to eight meter seas around kind of all day. But for me at the back, I just continually practice the men overboard in my head. <laughs> I was so embarrassed that this was the best story I could tell. Usually I sick flex with John and not by my lights. And Lisa is putting a lot of faith in me right now. I ended up getting John on the phone. How cool is the paint job on your boat? The paint job is made up of thousands of post-it notes with climate change messages from the community. Okay, yeah. so this is my sort of progress here. I need to stick yeah. that rubber onto there like that. What is it? What is that thing? Um, Good question, John. Let's go ask Lisa. Lisa, this is my partner, John. Hi, John. Hello, Lisa. <laughs> it's going over to the boot yeah. for the rudder. Ah, uh, right. The boot for the rudder. Use heaps of meso and it makes it wipe a lot easier. Okay, I know that I've been living <laughs> on board Takana for six months, but Lisa taught me how to do a bow line today. John is so, so disappointed yeah, in me. Yeah, she needs to pick up her <laughs> rope band there. Um, he's like, Christina. I said to him, well, every time I need one, I just ask you to do it for me. He <laughs> does. So thank you, Lisa. <laughs> And according to Lisa, it's okay to be a late bloomer. There is hope for us all newbies. I started when I was 22. Just got a job in the wet Sundays as the cook and the cleaner on a charter boat. Just fell in love with it. Here I am. And if you had asked me 10 years ago if I would be setting records, sailing around Antarctica, I would laugh in your face and think, no way, I would never be capable of that. I wouldn't be strong enough. And it wasn't until I started achieving smaller things that I started to realize how much more capable I was. And my skill set and my knowledge base has grown into the size of the project. It's probably a good time to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, as I'm giving away a competent crew sailing course valued at almost $2,500 to a subscriber in just a couple of weeks. To enter, simply head over to my Facebook page, Christina's Travels, follow the page and tag a friend on the competition post. It's free to enter. If you'd like to double your chances of winning this incredible five-day sailing course on the Great Barrier Reef with Mainstay Sailing School, become a Patreon. As a special bonus, I'll be giving away a second sailing course to one of my patrons. Good luck. I'll leave the links to my Facebook page and Patreon below and stay tuned. I'll be announcing the winners in a couple of weeks. No one can go into the Southern Ocean and not have fear. It's a real practical part of my conversations with my family is, you know, what happens if I don't come home? And the best thing you can do for yourself before any trip, whether it's Southern Ocean or maybe it's your first overnight passage on a boat, is just know your boat, know your vessel, but also trust your preparation. Do the right preparation so you can trust that it's going to get you through those moments where you're like, hmm, maybe this isn't such a good day at sea. It takes a lot of that fear and unknown factor out of it. And they're just, how did he even get out of the cabin? And you want to know the main cause that drives her, that keeps her awake her going? Well, the answer is at the bow of her boat. Take it to your lab. Yeah, so this is the micro lab coming through. So, also where all my sails are stored. 
so it's my cell locker. This is the subsea research unit here that tells us PCO2, which is like a carbon measurement in the ocean, gas levels. This whole world record breaking journey gave her the platform to highlight climate change. And then on this side is the microplastic sampler. The water's coming in through a skin fitting in the bottom of the boat. In this little device here, I have the filters and I have in there 500 micron filter at the moment and I'm about to change that out for a 100 micron filter. She raised $100,000 to hire this machine and make the data available and free to scientists globally. And it's data that simply doesn't exist. The information that you're going to be retrieving from that, I just find that fascinating. It really allowed me to try and step it up and go, well, how much of an impact can I have? What's the information that people need? On her circumnavigation, Lisa ended up breaking the speed record by almost 10 days. <laughs> There was thousands of people on the foreshores. Yeah. It's been an incredible welcome. The last time Lisa tried to circumnavigate Antarctica, she suffered a dismasting. The mast came down, and it came down um, a deck level, clean straight off. I prepared for an abandoned ship just in case, and I notified my shore crew that I'd demasted and issued a pan pan. But this time... <laughs> She did it. Thanks and for coming down to help. Well, I don't think my Sikaflex. Well, you know, the teamwork of rotating <laughs> and Sikaflex team worked quite well, I thought. One thing I was able to do, though, was use my media contacts to help this brave sailor get her story out, to tell the world what she was about to embark on. The news crews came out and they shared her story. She's a weapon, I think, to do that. It's pretty I'm cool. I'm so glad we got this on TV. We helped make that happen. Yeah. We're far more capable than we realize and I think we limit ourselves in our beliefs of what we can or can't do. And if there's a goal that you want to set in life or, or something that you want to do and you're not sure if you can do it, just start down that road because you'll figure it out and you'll find a way to make it happen if you want to achieve it enough. And that's what happened to me. So Coming up, John and I put Takana on the market. Good luck, we'll be watching you. Bye. We are selling our boat before we take you overseas for our next Western Mediterranean series. Oh my gosh, your boat looks so beautiful. I'll keep in contact. 